that note, I say welcome to the house of the Lord this beautiful Sunday morning. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for coming around. We would like to blend our voices also to sing. Let's see whether we can sing so beautiful as um, this quartet that I've just finished a great and um, a melodious song for us. So we will join our voices and we sing from our hymn book, CGS. We start with number 10, hymn number 10. Once again, we'd like to extend the warm welcome to our internet audience. Wherever you are located, we pray that the Lord who is with us here will be with you and bless you too. Well, if you are just um, stumbling on this uh, website or you are a regular customer on the website. Just to remind you once more, we are the Apostolic Faith Church. We are located on number 95 Fenham Road, 
here in Peckham, SE15, 1AE, is one of the two branches that we have in London. We have another branch at Bexley, where they are holding their service right now. But if you live locally or you are visiting, and you'd like to join us, you've not really missed much. You've missed the orchestration, which is the first prelude, and then the choir that gave us Great is the Lord, and then the quartet that we had before I stood up to lead the congregational songs. So please, if you live locally and you'd like to join us, feel free to please join us. But if you can't, you can as well just be where you are. And as I said, the Lord who is everywhere we certainly meet you where you are, and we bless you too. So we want to follow the same tune from um, the choir. We have been praising God in all their renditions, and we too want to just follow suit and do that, beginning with hymn number 10, The God of Abraham Praise. We are taking verses 1, 5, and 6. Just three verses from that song, 1, 5, and 6. Red and eighty six. Six, 
seven four will be our next song. <laughs> Wonderful friend to have. Now, let's take one more song before we have our congregational prayer, and that song will be 159.
Let us pray. Master, speak. Amen. Speak and let us hear. Amen. Let us heed your word. Amen. Help us, O Lord. Amen. Speak Amen. and let us hear. Amen. Let us hearken. Amen. Let us determine to do it. Amen. Let us apply it to ourselves. Amen. Let the word drive away sin from our heart. Amen. Let the word make us pure. Amen. Let it make us perfect. Amen. So we can be like our Father. Amen. From this word that we come out, give us a pure heart. Amen. Help us to be loving. Amen. We know you have all these graces to give us. Thank you for your love and care. Amen. Thank you for your protection over us. Amen. Thank you for your healing power. Amen. Thank you for the grace to run the race, Amen. which you alone can give. Amen. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. In the turmoil, you can give us peace. Amen. Even in our time of sorrow, you can give us peace. Amen. Glory be to your name. Amen. When people can say it's not a loving matter, but your child can still laugh. Yes. Because the laughter is from within. Yes. Thank you. Lord, thank you for your power. Yes. We want to live for you. Yes. We see ourselves every day that we are short. Yes. That's why we come from time to time to take sap from you. Yes. Today, let us not go on head. Yes. We want to hear you. Yes. We want to listen. Yes. We want to do it. Yes. Give us the grace, Amen. O Lord. Amen. Save souls today. Amen. Sanctify souls. Amen. Fill us with the Holy Ghost Amen. and fire. Heal the sick. Amen. Let us all go home rejoicing. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
to thank the Lord for this opportunity to be here with you today. I'm thankful that um, we felt the wonderful hospitality of all of our friends here. And um, it's wonderful to know that we can travel the world and have the same fellowship that we feel, whether it be in the United States, in Norway, in London. Our God is the same, and I'm thankful that I can say that I serve the Lord today. I just um, recently celebrated um, a big birthday. Uh, I turned 50, and it brings thoughts about uh, the life that I've lived so far. I'm thankful I was raised in a Christian home. I had parents that loved the Lord and taught my siblings and I about the Lord, and I had it in my heart that I wanted to serve the Lord. But um, that's not enough. And the Lord, he's been teaching me through these 50 years. Um, he's guided me, he's helped me, and he's not finished with me yet. <laughs> But I'm thankful for the times that he's been there when I felt alone or worried or concerned. I remember our son, uh, Tim, that's with us today. When he was born, <clears throat> they came to us and said, there's something wrong with his heart. And um, immediately we were concerned, but we knew that the Lord would help, and he did. He. Um, we had to spend a few extra days there at the hospital, and they were checking to make sure that his heart was beating uh, like it should. And um, within those few days, his heart started beating again normally, and he has a strong heart today, and we're thankful for that. You know, there's, um, there's so many times that the Lord has really come and given me a, a special assurance that he knows me and loves me, and I just thank him for all the many blessings that I have today. There's so many that I can't count them all, but the Lord is here, um, and I'm thankful that I can be here with you. I, I love the Lord, and I want to serve him.
It's good to be here. So we thank God for the blessing he has uh, given us to, to come to London. So it's uh, too many years since last time we were here. Yeah. And happy to see all those faces here. There are many familiar faces we've seen in the London camp meeting. And also very happy to see Brother Victor at the, at the, uh, sitting at the back. So we had some good times together and God bless you. So it's good to see that people are so happy because we know that as the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is. So without the joy, so we are weak. So it's important. It's not the, this is not the gospel of being sad, of sadness. This is a gospel of victory. Yes. Uh, this is a gospel of power. Yes. And, and that's what we're celebrating today. So as you know, today is the day of Pentecost. And that's the birthday of the church. And that's, that means that God made something wonderful for 2,000 years ago. And that's what we're going to dwell upon on uh, this morning by the grace of God. So we're going to read uh, some uh, verses from the uh, book of Acts, uh, the second chapter, where Peter is standing in front of the people and uh, giving them account of what just happened. And we read from the verse 16, we're reading, but this is that yeah. <laughs> which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Yeah. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all the flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, on my handmaidens, shall we pour out in those days all my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So whosoever shall be called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And that means whosoever means you, it means me. Yeah. If we just call upon the name of the Lord, Amen. believing, so he will save us. Amen. Yeah, Peter was standing here in front of these people. They were wondering what just had happened. Because something happened that never had happened before. Right. We read there in the earlier chapter that there was about 120 people who had come together to pray together. Just like I was counting here how many we are here this morning in this place. Think about it's about 120 here. And it is about this kind of people coming together with one mind and with one spirit to do that what the Lord asked them to do. Oh, yes. and, it was, and what was that? He said that you should, ye should tarry in Jerusalem mm -hmm. until ye be endued with power. Oh, yes. yeah. True. So that's what the message is today, that God wants to endue us with power. Amen. Amen. But there is nothing which just happens by itself. <laughs> and I was thinking on, on this... Uh, in the times of Elijah, he was a mighty man of God. So God was using him in, in a very special way. Sometimes we're thinking that we are alone. And Elijah had the same time. I, think, I thought that he was alone. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, me, I'm alone. There is none one. But even though then God revealed him that there are 7,000 men who have not yeah. kneeled their, yeah. their knees to Baal. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we, we are feel alone in that workplace. We heard the testimonies and, and, and in, in the Bible discussions, we had the Bible Sunday school, there was, you, in the workplace, you might be the only one who believe in God, but you still need to live the life. Yeah. You need still to, uh, to, to live for the Lord and show that you believe in God. And that was like Elijah had. He, he, he was alone, so to speak, even though he was not alone. God was with him. Yes. And he was persecuted. He was afraid of his life, just like you and me. We, we're getting afraid. 
We are not immune to human feelings. No. We, are, we are weak in ourselves. Yeah, right. So that's why we need the power of God in oh, our lives. Yes. Oh, yes. And Eliza was like that. He was there and he, he gave a, he gives the testament to God that there shall not be any rain in, uh, until uh, I speak again and the rain will come. And we know how the story goes that uh, they came to the, the, um, the sacrifice to the idols, to the Baal, and he sacrificed to the, to the God of, uh, of uh, Israel, as the Lord had taught him to do. And when he did according to what the Lord had asked him to do, according exactly what he asked him to do, yeah. the fire fell. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. The fire fell. Yeah. And that's the, the prerequisite in our lives too, that if we want the fire of God to fall upon our lives, we need to do it exactly as the Lord asks us Amen. to do. And the fire fell. And we know that is uh, typical of, uh, of giving our lives completely and wholly to God, yeah. and that's in, in the form of like what we, we call sanctification. Because we know that in order to receive something from God and live to Him wholly, and to be able to love him with our whole heart and mind and, uh, and soul is only one way of doing that, and that is to die to ourselves and surrender our lives oh, yes. and be sanctified oh, wholly yes. so that the fire can cleanse up the burnt sa sacrifice and consume us completely Amen. so that we can live for the Lord Amen. in a holy way. As we had in the Sunday school, there was this in the... In the Beatitudes we have there is that, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. And also we have in Hebrews 12:14 we see that, Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. And that's, that's what it is. If we, you want to see Lord, if I want to see Lord, we need to follow holiness. Yeah. We need to have this purity of heart in ourselves. And pureness doesn't come by just trying to wash it with some kind of detergent or something like that. There's only one way to clean us completely, and that is to burn away all the remnants of sins and, and dirty which is, and it's the fire of the Lord which cleanses us, the blood of Jesus, oh, yes. which makes us clean all together oh, yes. and makes us ready to see the Lord. Yes. So that's what Pentecost is about. Pentecost is about seeing the Lord. Because without holiness, no one can see the Lord. We want to see Lord in his power. Yeah. We want to see the Lord's spirit coming upon us. Yeah. And we cannot see that happening if there is some impurity in our lives. We need to live a dedicated life to the Lord. And he's able to do that. And that's what Elijah had. He was dedicated to the Lord. And the fire fell. Yeah. And he had a promise. He had got a promise from the Lord, Elijah. And it was that the rain would come. Yeah. And this is always like a little bit puzzling. It's uh, us uh, thinking about and, uh, um, this, that if he knew that the rain would come, wouldn't the rain come? Would he need to do anything for the rain to come? And what we read in the Bible, what Elijah did, he went up to the mountain, but before he went up to the mountain, he told to Ahab that, hurry up. I hear already the sound of the abundance oh, yes. of showers. Oh, yes. Do you hear the sound of the abundance of uh, uh, showers coming here down? Amen. But there was something he had to do. Even the promise was that the showers of blessings were on their way. Amen. We need to do something. Amen. And Elijah had to do that. He had to pray. Isn't that strange? Promise was that the rain is coming. Yeah. He could say, I'm relaxing, I've done my job. It comes when it comes. But it's not such in the kingdom of God. So God has called us to a holy walk with him. And he required, even though we have the promises, and they are yea and amen to everyone who calleth upon the Lord, they are sure the promises. But they just doesn't don't come to us like that without us doing our part. Yeah. Otherwise, we would be like that one who got the one talent from the Lord. 
We remember that, uh, that uh, parable Jesus was talking about. He gave ten talents to one person and five talents to another one and one talent to a third one. And they say, and go. Mm -hmm. Work with these. Use these. And we know those who go to ten and a five and they did work really hard. And then there was this one person who got his talent, but he didn't do anything what was given to him. He was probably thinking that the Lord has prom given promises, it will happen when it happens. And he was probably waiting for the blessings to come and happen, but they never happened. And he lived his whole life just keeping that little talent to himself. He had even, uh, he did. He didn't use it at all. Because he had this attitude, understanding that things just come by itself. No, God has called us into a holy walk with oh, him. Yes. Oh, yes. What he has, should have done would to do what the Lord asked him to do. And Elijah did exactly that. He went up to the mountain, I said, and he kneeled down, put his head between his knees, mm -hmm. and was calling upon the Lord. And what was he calling upon the Lord? Send the, send the showers of blessing. Yeah. Send the showers now on our way. Mm -hmm. Because you promised that. We need to remind, remind uh, God that you have promised this. We need to go and, and pray to God and do what he's expecting from us. Mm -hmm. And it was not only like a snapshot prayer. No. He was praying and then he sent his servant to see. Go and look if you see anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. There was no sign, just blue sky, nothing. So he had to pray a second time. He prayed and prayed and nothing happened. But the promise was still there, I will send the showers of blessing to your way. But did he give up? No. Did he argue with the God? But you told us to send us and complain and feel sorry. Now I have prayed three times already and nothing has happened. No, we, we read there that he continued and prayed the fourth time, yes. sent the servant again, and he didn't see anything. Yes, our tribe faith will be tried in these days. Yes. Whatever we're doing will be tried. Sure. And it, the, the devil is after our faith. Mm -hmm. He wants to destroy it so that we give up. We see that it doesn't pay to pray. You can, you can feel like we can be, be, be sick in our bodies, feel the pain here and there. We can have different types of struggles in our lives. Now, it's not easy to be human. We have these human tra struggles, each one of us. We do. All kind of troubles, and it always feels that our troubles are more troublesome than others. So why just me? It's the devil who tries to beat your faith and my faith that we would give up after we have prayed three times or four times. He says, keep on praying, oh, yes. keep on fighting the oh, good yes. fight of faith, Amen. and in time I will hear your uh, prayers and I will answer to your prayers. Amen. And so was Elijah. He got encouraged because he knew that well, if God has said something, he would do what he has promised to do. Oh, yes. And that what he believed. He prayed the fire fifth time. No answer yet. He prayed the sixth time. And he said, now this time it has to be. But there was no answer yet. Keep on believing. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. And lay Amen. hold on the eternal life, as the Lord says. Amen. And he will help you. He will hear your Amen. prayers. Amen. And then uh, Elijah went and prayed the seventh time. God. He didn't know that the answer would come after the yeah. seventh time. Mm -hmm. We know because we have the Bible written here. Yeah. He didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then he sent a servant again to see, go and look again. Surely the Lord is answering our oh, prayers. Yes. And the servant came. He didn't say, now there is a thunder coming and a black clouds and everything. No, he didn't see anything like this. He didn't even hear any uh, sound of rain. He said, there's a tiny, tiny little cloud. And that's it. 
Yeah. We need the sign from the God, the tiny little cloud. And he said, this is it. The Lord is fulfilling his promises. And he got up believing in that what the Lord had said. And we, we read about what that wonderful things happened. The showers came down. And, and, and the dry uh, country, was, the land was, get, it was uh, overflowing of water. So that's what the showers of the blessing are doing. God. And that is the same was with the Pentecost. The Lord, had, Jesus had told to the disciples that go into Jerusalem and tarry there until ye be endued with the power. I will send to you the promise of my Father mm-hmm. because it's expedient for you that I go to my Father. If I know not go to my Father, then I'm not able to send to you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. He had to go to the Father in order that we could be here today. Amen. That we could have this day of Pentecost. Amen. That the Lord is really wonderful. Amen. But he said, you have to go there, tarry. And tarrying means it wasn't like an active thing. It's not only just sitting and relaxing. <laughs> but go there, just like Elijah. I will send you the promise, but you have to do what is I expect you to do. And um, we know that not all of them did that. We read, read other places. We understand that there were about 500 people who saw Jesus being taken up to heaven. 500. But then we read in the Acts in the first chapter that there were only 120 who uh, stuck together and were praying. We don't know what happened to the, those 380 they might have a good reason, probably have a business to take care of, other things and uh, cares of this and that. Mm-hmm. And we could have a good excuse that we wait for tomorrow to give our lives to God. We can wait next week because I don't have time now. We have, I have busy. Uh, we, we, have, we have the rest of our life. We are busy always. <laughs> it's always something yeah. which comes on our lives. But now we have to say today is the day of salvation. It is here and now that the Lord will meet our needs. If we have this attitude that we will postpone and procrastinate and wait for these things, we'll never get anything. Mm -hmm. If you you feel sick in the body, you don't want to get healed next week. No, No, you want to get healed now. Now. If you have a big trouble in your ways, you don't want to get your problem solved uh, next year. It's, it's today. If it's that in way in the physical world, mm-hmm. why not in the spiritual? Uh-huh. Why would, would we have this eagerness in ourselves and this dedication of giving our lives to the Lord? Mm-hmm. It is today is the day yeah. of salvation. Oh, yes. It is today that the Lord is doing his work in our lives yeah. if we are willing to give our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord, which is our reasonable service. So that's what God expects. And it shouldn't be like any sad thing to do. As I said, as I said in the beginning, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So God has called us into an an happy relationship with him. We don't need to like show our faces that we have coming just coming from a funeral or something like that. No, we need to be happy. Yeah. Show the strength of the Lord in us because when God has done something for us, it's a happy thing. It's a joyous yeah. thing, and we should be showing that in our lives and being joyous in the Lord. Thank Him. Yes, the Lord has called us, and that's what probably happened there with these 380. They were had different things in their minds. Because it was only 10 days before this happened. They were in the Mount of Olives, looking when Jesus was taken up to the heavens in the cloud. And all these people saw him. Wouldn't that put some kind of faith in you when you see the the Son of God going up into heaven and say, wouldn't uh, wouldn't you say that, oh, I give my life to you. I follow you wherever you go, Jesus and give this dedication. Mm. But even though it was so close and real and physical, still it seems that something just came in their their way. Mm -hmm. And only 120 
went into the upper room. Yeah. But there was something special with these 120. So they came together in this one place. They were in the same place. They were, they were assembled together, as it say, right? when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. One accord, what does it mean? That it means that they were united in the same spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it doesn't mean that we becoming uh, the same person. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. Because God has created us in his image, mm -hmm. in his holiness. If he had wanted to have the same person, he would, would have made, uh, put us in a copier. <laughs> that everyone should look like the same and think the same and say the same thing at the same time. No, mm -hmm. he has created variety of people. Yeah. Yes variety of needs and, and tastes. Someone might like uh, chocolate and someone likes uh, uh, something which is salty and all kind of different things. Mm -hmm. We have our own needs. We are different persons. Mm -hmm. So that is what doesn't mean that we're becoming one, that everybody likes the same things in oh, this, uh, this world. But we, what it comes to oneness is that we have the image of God in our lives, that we, we have the, uh, the holiness of the Lord in us, Amen. and that we we, we believe in the same thing. We believe that there is one God, yeah. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes. And that we believe that he's called us in to walk with him. Mm -hmm. And that's what is this uh, oneness. Mm -hmm. And that can only be accomplished when he makes us holy, when he oh, sanctifies yes. us. Oh, yes. And that's what was the condition of these 120 when they were in the upper room, mm -hmm. when they were waiting for the promise of the Father. And also the thing is that they didn't really know what they were waiting for. We know now when we read the history. But they were only told to tarry and I will send you the promise of the Father. So they didn't even know how that could be accomplished. What would be the sign, how they would know what then that had happened. And that's a good thing to, to think about uh, uh, when you're seeking. If there's anyone who has not received the Lord yet in, in, in uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you've been struggling with that, and you don't really know how to do and receive that, so you don't need to worry. Yeah. Disciples didn't even know how would that happen. Mm -hmm. yes. What they had to do was to make sure mm -hmm. that their sins were um, uh, for, uh, forgiven, that they were new creatures in Christ Jesus, yeah. and their names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing they needed to endure. And also this, that that they had the purity of heart. Yes. And having this oneness, which only God can give us. Yeah. God. And then they had to sacrifice their lives, give their lives to God, and keep believing. Having one, one mind of focusing on that, what the Lord had asked them to do, and then the promise would be given. Yeah. And we know that the Lord didn't disappoint them. They, no. were, they had this 10 days waiting time, mm -hmm. focusing on the things of the Lord, mm -hmm. probably talking about things, what would happen. They were not allowed to go and spread the gospel. And probably someone good might give a suggestion, we're going to just sit here and we need to go out. And, uh, because he said, go to the whole world and make all the nations my, my disciples. Uh -huh. They could have somebody go, I need to go now. Mm -hmm. No, you have to tarry yeah. until we get That's the power. Mm -hmm. So they listened to the Lord. They were there, one accord, no struggle, no quarreling, and they were waiting and waiting. Mm -hmm. They were seeing that the day of Pentecost was coming, mm -hmm. but they didn't really, I don't think so, they really knew that that would be on that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, we can understand that it had to be on that day. Mm -hmm. Because that's also the Lord's, uh, Lord is uh, like working in his uh, miraculous ways. He has these seven feasts which we know in the Bible. And he is fulfilling every and single feast which is uh, described in the Bible. We, we have these uh, spring, four, four spring uh, feasts, which is the, uh, the we have the uh, Passover, the, the feast of the unleavened bread, the Feast of the First Fruits, and the Day of Pentecost. All these feasts have been fulfilled in Christ Jesus when yeah. he was on the earth. Mm -hmm. And now we're waiting for the three fall feasts to come, which is the, the Feast of uh, Trumpets, mm -hmm. 
and uh, the great day of atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles. They are in the future, and we're looking forward that the Feast of Trumpets is soon going to, to take place when the trump of God is being blown, and then the death in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive will follow them up Amen. to meet the Lord Amen. in the air. Amen. Amen. And it was the first, uh, the, the Pentecost, we know we're reading in the, in the Bible in the Old Testament, it was on that day when the first trump of God was blown, the first trumpet. It was on the Mount Sinai when the God came down and there was fire and the sounds and the trumpet of God was blown and it got stronger and stronger. So that was the first trumpet of God. And the last trumpet of God, the last trump of God is on the day of, on the Feast of Trumpets. And we're waiting for that. And we need to be ready. And the only way of being ready is to have that what God has given us. Amen. And that is that we experience this Pentecost in our lives. Because that is for every one of us. And that's what we were reading here about that uh, when they were waiting for this, these apostles, on this day of Pentecost, just like in the first day of Pentecost when God came down, in this time, God came down in a mighty way. We see, read there that, uh, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. and began to speak with other tongues Amen. as the Spirit gave them utterance. And that's what happens when we do the will of the Lord. Yeah. When we wait, Amen. His promise is not idly sitting and talking and doing all kinds of uh, other things, but focusing on the Lord, thanking yeah. Him for what He has done, yeah. and asking Him to fulfill His promise in your life, in my life, yeah. and He will do it, Amen. and He can do it today. Yeah. And He can refill our lives also today with yes. His Spirit. Because, because without His Spirit, we are, we are helpless in the world. Yes. We cannot do anything of ourselves. We need the Lord's help in our lives. Yes. And the power of God came upon their lives. And they were not anymore the same. Yeah. And this is what happened 2,000 years ago. But God said also that I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And he came again for 110 years ago. There was this mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit in, uh, which started the, actually in the end of 19, 1800 cent, uh, century, in the beginning of 1900. It started to have some showers here and there. And then in 1906, it came, the full showers Amen. came down. Amen. It's been 110 years ago. And that showers were sent to prepare the people of God oh, yes. to meet the Lord. Mm -hmm. True. And it was already that time it, the Spirit told that I will come soon. Mm -hmm. Think about now how close we are. We don't know if it's coming today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But one thing is that he said that this promise is to you, to all, everyone whom our Lord calleth. This is not something that we should deal lightly. This is something that we should really pursue with everything is in our uh, lives, that we could meet the Lord and see Him, <coughs> provided that we are living the holy and pure life for the Lord. Amen. And He's able to do that. Yes. And He will send this mighty power again today. It's not limited to the first Pentecost. No. It's not limited to the 1906 no. revival. But the revival can begin in you and me today, Amen. so that He can refill. And he will asking a people here who is willingly uh, sacrificing, their, offering their lives to the Lord and follow him wherever he wants us to, to go and to be also there where we are. Because the most difficult to place is always mm, almost there where we are. Yeah. It's much easier to escape some other place, mm. but be there where the Lord wants us to be. So that's the best place to be. Yeah. We don't need to be afraid what the world has in store. Because if we are in the will of the Lord, so that's yeah. the safest God. place Praise we, we have. Amen. We don't need to worry about anything. He will be there with us. Amen. He will help us. Amen. Uh, but he is calling us to a closer walk with him. Amen. And that will happen only that we, we yield our lives to him. We realize that he is the giver of life. 
that he has the power in hands, there is nothing which is impossible with God. So even though you, you feel that there might be some, some doubt in you, that the Lord has not answered, so don't give up. Remember Elijah. We see read in James that he was just the same, like, same kind of man as we are, with like passions, the same kind of weaknesses as we have. But he prayed, yeah. and it happened. Yes. So the promises are the same for us today, that if we pray here today, we ask him to do something for our lives, Jesus. he will do it. Amen. Amen. He will stand behind his word. We don't need to, don't let the devil whisper these words that, not today, I don't feel like that. Mm. I have tried before. I, I don't feel like, I don't see anything. There is only a little dot on the sky, little tiny clouds, so that cannot be that. Mm. It is that little tiny yeah. light of hope yeah. which God is putting in your heart. Lay hold on that. Build your, on, on your, the faith on that and see the Lord, you have promised this to me. Yeah. And he would do that if we have given our lives to him, he, he will be with us. And if he has promised something, no matter what men and people and devil yeah. says, he will accomplish yeah. what yeah. he has said. Amen. So we, let's Amen. praise the Lord and ask him to come in a mighty way today so that uh, all the world should know that there is a Revival breaking out in Peckham. Yeah. And the Lord can do mighty things. And we need the power of God. It's not only that we say mighty. He needs to confirm his word yeah. with signs and wonders. Yeah. That people might believe that Lord is with us. Yeah. And it's up to us. It's up to you. It's up to me to give our lives to God. And he will come and su support his work and do the mighty things what only God can do. So let's praise the God and come to him and ask his blessings and ask his power over lives, and he will do it today for you and for me. Amen. Amen. your holy name for this visitation oh god send your holy spirit here oh lord Amen. prepare Amen. our hearts oh god Amen. help us to do Amen. what it will take Amen. for you to visit us oh lord bless us today send the abundance of rain save souls oh lord sanctify oh lord baptize with the holy ghost and fire oh god Renew our stand with you, Lord. Thank you for answering our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.